Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this houndstooth design using a single rectangle in Affinity Designer for iPad. Now, while I am on the iPad version of the app, if you're following along on the desktop version, the process is the same. So if you know where the tools are located, you can easily follow along. Let's get started. I want to create a canvas that's at least 3,600 pixels square because that's going to give me the most flexible resolution possible while still maintaining a quality print. I also wanna make sure that I'm setting up a canvas that I can easily divide my motif into to get a nice seamless design. So I'm going to go with 4,000 pixels and I've set my DPI to 300 as that's what I need for my print on demand sites. I also want to turn my grid on because that's going to help with the creation of the motif. So I'll go to my preview panel here and just toggle that on. Now this is fine, but I want to change the type of grid. So I'm going to go to the right of that and choose grid settings. I want to change this from auto to standard. That way, if I scale my canvas up and down, the grid doesn't change. 100 pixel spacing is just fine. And then finally, I want to make sure that snapping is on and that when I go to snapping options, snap to grid is on as well. The motif that I ultimately tile is going to be a 500 pixel motif, but I find it's easier to create it at a larger size. So I'm gonna start with a 1000 pixel rectangle. The overall motif is going to end up being 2000 and then I'll scale it down to 500 once everything is together. So I'm going to select my rectangle tool and I want to use my command controller. If yours isn't on, just go to the documents menu at the top and toggle on command controller. I'm going to run my finger through shift and command until they're locked and I'll just drag out a rectangle. Now I want to make sure that this is 1000 pixels. So I'll go to my transform panel and it looks like it's fine. I'm just going to make sure this is set to one of the corners of the grid that's going to make it a lot easier to create this. Now I have the square and I want to split it into four shapes, two triangles and two diagonal shapes. I'm going to do that using the divide function in geometry. And to do it, I'm going to create four strokes that are going to help me cut this into pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a red fill just so that you can see it a little bit more easily. Now the iPad is a bit difficult when it comes to snapping shapes precisely. So I'm going to use the grid and the handle of the strokes that I create to make it easier. I'll select my pen tool and I'm gonna deselect my shape and grab just a black stroke. The actual color doesn't matter because the strokes are going to disappear. I just want to be able to see it. So I'm gonna set my stroke width to 25 pixels. I'll go ahead and start by tapping out a node. And I'm gonna hold shift down on the command controller and tap out a nice long line. Ultimately, these are going to be angled at 45 degrees and I need to cross the entire rectangle. So I'm making sure that they're longer so they don't cut in and sit on the inside of the rectangle. Now I want to grab my move tool and you can see that on my stroke, I have this handle. That's the pivot point or the transform origin point of the stroke. And I want to move that up to the top left corner of my square. I'm going to create four strokes, one in the top left corner, one in the bottom right corner, and then two in between. The one at the top left corner and bottom right corner are going to help evenly distribute those in between them. So I need to angle this at 45 degrees. So again, I'll hold shift down on my command controller, and I'm just going to drag the, hang on the handle until it's rotated to 45 degrees. I want to duplicate this, so I'll hold my finger down and duplicate it. Again, I'll hold shift down to keep it in a straight line and I'm just going to drag it right to the other side and it should snap into place because of the grid and snapping. And you can see I get that nice red and green line that tells me right where I'm supposed to be. So I want to create the two that are going to be in between this. So I'm gonna hold two fingers down on the canvas and just drag two more out. The actual placement doesn't matter because I'm going to use my alignment options next. So I'll go to my layers. And I want to make sure that all four strokes and not the rectangle are selected. I'll go up to my alignment options and I'm going to space horizontally and space vertically. That's going to make sure that they're evenly spaced and aligned. Now I don't need both of these corner lines at this point, so I'm going to select one and delete it. For this third one, I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select the, the line first, then hold down shift and drag this up until it snaps to the center of the rectangle. And again, you can see I get that green and red line. And now you can see where I'm starting to get the shapes that are going to come from this rectangle. I have two triangles and then my two diagonals. Now it's important that these strokes say strokes because I want them to disappear. 
if I expand these into fills and then use the divide function, the fills are going to be divided up as well. And there's going to be gaps between the shapes. And I don't want that. So I'm just going to leave these as strokes. And with my move tool, I'll drag to select all four shapes, including the rectangle. I'll go up to the contextual menu at the top and choose divide. And now you can see in my layers panel, I have four separate shapes. I want to select the rectangle at the top and I'm going to hold shift down and select the third shape. And then with shift still held down, I'm going to drag these up diagonally until they snap up into the middle. And you can see I have the red and green lines. And if all went to plan, if I select all of this, you can see my bounding box there. That bounding box should create a 2000 by 2000 pixel square. And it does in this case. If you see decimals or the two don't match, then there's something wrong with the alignment. Now, finally, I want to select my rectangle again and that same red fill, and I'm going to drag out one more 1000 pixel rectangle. And I'll drag that right here in this top left corner. And again, I'll select everything. And if everything is aligned the way it's supposed to, this should read 2000 by 2000. So I'm all set. With all of those selected, I'm going to go back up to my contextual menu and I want to add the entire thing together. So now I have a 2000 pixel square motif that I'm actually going to scale down to 500. So I'll make sure that this is locked in the middle and I'll keep 500 into one side. At this point, I don't need my grid anymore. So I'm going to turn that off. Now this motif is going to be contained entirely inside the canvas. I don't need anything to go off the side. So I don't need to complete anything on the other side. I'm going to bring this up to the top left corner and I'm going to temporarily deselect it and then select it again. That way when I duplicate it, it doesn't move it. I'll hold my finger down on the canvas and duplicate it. And I'm going to go to my transform panel and on the X axis, I'm going to key in plus 500. That's the width of my shape. Now from here, as long as I don't deselect, I can duplicate it by bringing up the quick menu. So I'm holding my finger down on the canvas and hitting duplicate. And I can power duplicate that all the way across. And again, I don't want to go off the other side of the canvas. With that first draw in place, I'll go ahead and select all of those motifs. And again, hold my finger down and choose duplicate. Go to my transform panel. And this time on the Y axis, I'm going to key in 500. And again, I can power duplicate all the way down. And that's my tile. It's done. From here, I can make changes to the color if I would like. I didn't turn this into a symbol, but I could have turned the original motif into a symbol if I wanted to. In this case, because there's so many that are the same color, I can really just choose all of the curves and change the color. But if I wanted to, again, I could go ahead and add that as a symbol. So I'm going to test this pattern before I officially say everything's okay. But before I do that, I want to drag out a rectangle in the very back. So I'm just going to drag this out, choose this off white fill. And with my move tool, I'm going to move that to the back. I'll go to my layers and I want to grab the artboard layer. It's really important you choose the artboard layer and not those underneath. In my assets, I have a category set up called the pattern hub. And in the very bottom, I have a subcategory for test designs. So I'm going to add this artboard to that. And as soon as I do that, I can add a new artboard and test to make sure that this is scaling okay. So I'll go up to my documents menu, choose artboards. I'm going to tap the plus sign to add the same size canvas. I'll grab my gradient tool and I'm just going to tap that new asset and choose set as fill. And if I hold shift down on my command controller, it's going to keep it locked upright. And I can just scale this down. Now, another reason that I like to test this particular design is if you look closely, designer has this tendency when you're zoomed out to add little white lines. And just to make sure that I don't have any issues with any of my alignment, I like to make sure that I don't see those here. And if I zoom in, I'm not seeing any of them. So I can call this done. If you have any questions or a suggestion for a tutorial you'd like to see here on my channel, let me know in the comments below. If you like my teaching style, check out my full length classes either on Skillshare or my own learning site, The Creator Collage. I have lots more tutorials coming, but in the meantime, check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.